You're listening to the Impact Implosion on the Angry Marks Podcast Network. Groundhog's Day, February 2nd, 2017. It is another episode of the Impact Implosion here on the Angry Marks Podcast Network. As always, the shadow to my non-shadow, Mike Pullen. Oh, by the way, I'm Seth Drinking. Six more weeks of winter. Yes. And many more weeks of PNA. <sighs> yeah. So last week I gave the show an A. This week? And now we have the... The other side of that coin. Yeah, we're going to get, unfortunately, you know, I really, because they gave us the best idea for open fight night. These briefcases, people could challenge for them. And they fucked it up. Oh, they absolutely fucked it up. Um, news. Let's see if there's any news. I, I don't think there was any news, actually. No news. No news. Yeah, there was no news on this one. Um... Okay, so we start the show with the montage of Eddie losing the title back to Franklin, thankfully. Yeah, and we, but that's not over yet. We begin with the Broken Hardies, but no Rebby or Maxwell. Must have been nap time. <laughs> oh, they needed a babysitter. And Tyrus is not with them anymore. Yeah. So, the they basically, Matt talks about the seven deities. They must win lots of championship again and again. And you know how this works. We uh, want the bucks of youth. The or the new. days of new. And I'm like, uh, the new day are no longer that. Yes. And neither are the Wyatts. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Way to pay attention, Matthew. Oh, did he say the Wyatts? The family of Wyatts. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. They ain't tag champs either. <laughs> The Alphas of America and the Doc uh, and the Doc the Club the Doc of Bullets. Anderson. The Doc and Anderson. The, the Club of the Bullets. <laughs> well, can't call them the Club of the Bullets. <laughs> WWE can't call them that, but yeah. The hey, Doc. The Painful Authors. The Doc and Carl. <laughs> the Painful Authors. Yeah. The Painful Authors. <laughs> Ah, uh, so, yeah. They talked about a teleportation mechanism at an international... Oh, do I want to see that made? Oh, yeah. I want to see Senior Benjamin make that. Yeah. So, Brother Nero challenges Franklin for the belt. Franklin comes out with new music that I actually like, although other people don't. I didn't realize that was... I knew it was new music. I uh, It was okay. It was fine. And Josh he mentions the, that when I first when he came out. Oh, Matt, Josh mentions that since uh, Matt's re- Jeff's wrestling tonight, um, no tag title match, so you can't challenge for the tag title. Oh titles. shit! Well, well he had specifically mentioned that because of later on stupidity yeah. later on. But yeah, Franklin says, you know what? I'm ready for anything. Are you? And you know what? I'm ready for you to even try your brother to steal this belt from me. And Nero's like, no, no, no. Brother Moore, take a break to the back. And he's like, wonderful! (laughs) I can go eat some glorious green beans. Yes, some glorious green beans! (laughs) With Bobby Roode for some reason. (laughs) So, um, basically they start the match, and um, it was probably the best match in the show, (laughs) sadly. Yeah, that, that's going to say something for this show. No. <laughs> this was the best match of the show, yep. which it was decent. And but this was actually retains, good. And, and we Steph, have Eddie Jeff, come out. Because uh, Jeff does the same stupid things he always does. Fucks around with the steel steps, knowing no, he's going to... He went for like a dive to the floor and missed. Yeah, because 
Franklin uh, rolled in under the ring. <laughs> By the way, he, hopefully he did not find any swoggles under there. I was going to say, no swoggle. Yeah, no swoggle. Um, Franklin uh, powerbombed Jeff onto the uh, steel steps because Jeff's got to have a spot where he hits the steel steps. Luckily, luckily we don't have our Jeff Hardy injury angle because they're not going overseas this year. Um, they had a, Jeff did a twist of fate outside the ring, which meant nothing. He had a twist of fate in the ring, but a two count, and the fans were chanting, that was three. He hit the swanton, and we get the one, two, and then one of the Broke. legs ends up on the road. Yep, so Franklin wins in the end after that spot of the, uh, missing the dive. Uh, hits a spear, wins the match, and here comes Eddie Edwards. Ugh. And I'm like, I bet he wants a rematch. But it can't be tonight because the champ even he even knows it says he has suit on just just like, Hey Eddie, I just thought of something. What if someone challenged you for your title shot? That'd be good. That didn't happen. That should have <laughs> happened. Would, that would actually be a good idea. Someone should have thought of that. We could have had a broken yeah, match challenge, you, Eddie, and then we have last week's come Or you could have said Or you could have said, you know, you can't challenge for title shots. Sorry. So he keeps calling Franklin Triple B, uh, and then he's like, you know, Triple B, what does that mean? And he's like, bitch, bitch boy, boy Bobby. Bobby, and I'm like, not good. It's stupid. Uh, you're bullying the heel. Yeah, yeah, you're, yeah, you're, you're, you're bullying the heel to get your way. You're gonna get your way anyway. I, I call him Franklin the Turtle. Yeah. That's, that's more, that's more creative because it takes actual research. Yeah. To look that up. And Eddie gets one last chance. You lose. You never get You're another done. opportunity at me. You're done. And Eddie accepts. So, after that segment, Tyrus says that he and EC3, Eli Drake are gonna, not EC3, Eli Drake are gonna shock the world. Shocking. Oh, you mean Tyrus might actually do something useful? That would be shocking. Or will the Shockmaster show up? And Fall to the uh, impact wall. zone somehow. So, fall, fall on the wall? Lose his helmet? <laughs> By the way, the, the Shit's Creek show, they keep pumping. Sounds like the worst show in TV history, by the, by no, the way. No, they're, they're, I've seen worse. We're yeah. going to have to th- do a commercial that was worse. <laughs> oh, and uh, Rosemary, apparently there was something on Facebook last week about Rosemary offering Brandy to join Decay for whatever fucking reason. And she said no. So once again, Rosemary creeps her out. And yeah. Creeps her, says, you know you can join de- inviting her to the garden so they can decay together? Um, um, creepy. Yeah. Brady says no. And so that she sounds, says. That author sounds tempting, but no. No, it doesn't even sound tempting. It's like, uh, I'm. You know I'm married, right? <laughs> no. I'm a guy, but I'm talking about Brandy here. Right. I'm Brandy here. She's already married, so sorry, <laughs> Rosemary. You're going to have to find someone else to try to hit on. Huh. Maybe huh. Jade. Oh, wait, she's married, uh, dating Eddie Kingston. Um, hmm. Oh, Laurel Van Ness? Oh, she's tr- Try to find somebody. Madison Rain's yeah. married to Josh. What? Marie is married to Mike Bennett. <laughs> yeah, there's not a lot of options. Gail Kim always she's married to a chef. Yeah, a chef with freaking steroid arms. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, sand out then. Oh, boy. Uh, Aaron Rex is food. Aaron Rex is brought in a golf cart. <laughs> and he rolls the full, out the special mat for him, and I think he does almost go on Rockstar Spud's back, which uh, could have hurt the guy. But poor Spud, poor Spud. Yeah, this is he deserves way better than this. This will continue because there's two more. <laughs> okay, it's time Spud for the, is British Virgil. Okay, it's time for the shittiest match. Oh, Sienna no. versus Brooke. You know, I know everyone loves Brooke, and I do too. She was great before her absence, but she She's has rusty. not gotten any better. Also, Maria's wearing no shoes. 
Although I think they she mentioned she might have lost. No, she might have lost them while running. Yeah, they. I think they pointed that out on commentary. Yeah. So yeah, Maria she lost the shoe. Thanks, Josh. Yeah. So there was a submission hold that Brooke tried. It was supposed to be like a bow and arrow. It was yeah, uh, inverted STF. But unfortunately, <laughs> fell Brooke apart. forgot to grab the legs. Got to hook sort of the leg. Fell apart there in the middle. Yeah. So she forgot to head. So she's just sitting on her back. Trying to crank her neck, and here's Yikes. Sienna trying to say, "Okay, this is struggling. This is hurting. I can't Ladies get." Ladies and gentlemen, we have a video way. for Botchamania. I could get out of this easily. <laughs> I don't remember. There were a few other botch spots where they like missed shit. That was just uncoordinated. It was just not good. Um, uh, they had, Sienna uh, wins with the silencer, which is a pound. Yeah. After yeah. after though, Maria shoving. It broke off the ropes. Yikes. Yeah, this was just... Oh, dear God. A decent worker in Sienna and someone who hasn't really worked much in the last couple yeah, of years. So, both of these two, just, they may be Melina and Mickey James here. Where they're two decent workers, they just cannot have good matches. Yeah. And that always sucks. So, after the match, Marie and Sienna taunt Brooke while she's down. Backstage DCC says everyone has a target on their back. Kingston, well, that, no matter how much or little he says, is a really good promo. Oh, no. Next, yeah. Next is Sandow in the makeup room. Oh, in this God. red little fluffy thing, red oh, pipe shirt. And he's getting and Spud's shirt, like. It's a Seinfeld shirt. Yeah. He's like, he's like, the makeup lady, come on, you're not doing it right. I'll take over That's on the later. makeup. That's later. later. No, the ma- this makeup segment was now. Oh, the Robbie E segment is later. Ugh. Yeah. He demands compliments from Spud and says he's excellent. Boo! Terrible. Yes. So DCC comes out, and they're in the ass-kicking business, and they said they're, they run an impact. So you know, here's, here's, here's three choices. They could A – Challenge the grand champion and try to take that belt away. B, take the X Division champion, which while it would suck that if they took it, would make sense kayfabe wise. Or C, fuck, challenge it for a title and just waste it on decay for a false count anywhere match. They chose C because why the fu- actually no, C is they could challenge for a number one contendership or shit like that. No. It's D. They wasted it on fighting decay. Uh, and I had an argument with a person who kept bugging me about how this makes you – you're overthinking it. You're I, No, I'm not. And I'm not well, over – They could have made, said, wait a minute. No. Because, yeah, the, these two teams have been rivals, but they haven't really had – Yeah. Like, this makes no sense. Two teams that have already lost to the tag champions. But also, also, yeah, they, they – they sort of just challenge for a title. If they're trying to run the place, you get titles. TNA well, has taught us for a long time that titles equals running the place. Titles equal he who has the gold has the power. Yeah, that's an impact. Impact logic. Yeah, I'm going back to old days. That's wrestling so, logic. Yeah. Well, not having the complete power because the uh, authority figure has that, but, you know, have a title. Or you could have mentioned something like, you know, we have something big planned, but we're gonna we got to take out the K to orchestrate it and do that. But no, yeah, they, they just they just to ca- they challenge them out of the fucking. And they pool. had a six minute brawl. Or here's a better idea: you have Trevor Lee be number two, and Trevor Lee do challenge the X Vision title. You have the Grand title, and you know DK without. Okay, DCC without any title shots, challenge freaking decay. Mm-hmm. You know that make more sense than this, than this right. kayfabe wise. I'm not, I'm not over, not over analyzing this. This is logic. You challenge for the titles. They even mentioned you challenge the, what title they're going to challenge for. They don't. Nope. So no, this match is a basic garbage wrestling match. Um, a bit. Uh, no, somebody takes the bump in the. 
Kingston takes, and, takes a slam, Kingston takes a choke slam into the tax, which and then much a bit hurt. Takes a bump into a barbed wire board. Of course he does. <laughs> and and crazy, crazy Steve, Steve takes a pile driver through a table. A spike pile driver through a table. So they lose. Yep. The Last week, jobbers had, now. Yeah, they had a better hardcore title match. Last, they had a hardcore match last week. Not a title match, but a hardcore match. So, backstage, Maria and Mike Bennett run into Braxton Sutter. Hmm. Well, actually, first, uh, Drew Galloway says he's defended his title tonight, which DCC could have challenged for that. Mm -hmm. And then, Maria is blackmailing Braxton Sutter, says, oh, you're going to pop the question to Laurel. Or not? The hell? Oh, Oh, yes, you are, unless Allie's... Say bye bye unless you know what will happen to Allie, and he's like, "Wait, what? Yeah, why, why are you dragging her into this?" Well, that's well. Trying it's obviously it, it's obviously got something to do with Allie that he's protecting her from something by being the slot lamb to the slaughter. But he's got his ball in his wife's purse. Yeah, he does. Congratulations. <laughs> so Drew Galloway comes out. And he says he's going to make the Grand Championship bigger than the TNA title. And he knows people aren't 100% sold on this title. So, and it's because he was injured when it was initially introduced. So, uh, he'll put the title on the line in any company in any country. And, of course, Moose Here comes, comes out. Moose. Here comes Moose. Yeah. And he gets people to laugh because you kicked me in the balls. <laughs> you kicked me in the balls twice. Yeah, no, he kicked you kicked me in the nuts. That's what he said. You kicked me in the nuts. And the crowd was laughing. Yeah, you, you kicked me in the nuts. So he's mm-hmm. supposed to be fearing and the crowd just laughing. So Drew says, Hold on there, I beat you. Um We're not gonna twice. do this match seventy five times. I'm yeah, gonna we're not gonna do this. Else. If if I need to make this title better, I can't have you have enough I can't keep fighting you. So I, I already I found this guy. Op- opponent already someone already talked to me in the back and said they wanted the shot and I'm gonna give it to them. This guy Jobber Rob Ryzen and Drew beats the shit out of him in in one round. Yep. Yep. One, two, three, that's it. After the future. You didn't show. even need the round for this one. You could have just had him kick him in the face and hit the DDT and nope. get the win. Nope. Yep. So Backstage, Shane Helms is with Trevor Lee saying he's going to make his challenge next. Again, DCC, you look like idiots because Trevor Lee challenges DJ Z. And cuts a pretty decent promo here uh, when he comes out. Because you've been ducking me for too long, but I have a briefcase. Even though you've gotten like two or three title shots from him. Gotten many, yeah. (laughs) One at Bounce, by the way. He knows DJ Z has a bad knee, but get out here anyways because you're going to challenge. You're going to put your title on the line, and it ain't just going to be a title match, but a ladder match for the I title. I do kind of like the psychology on Trevor's part here because he knows DJ Z's going to yes, bad Yes, absolutely. You can yeah. see that in his freaking eyes from last week that he's like, oh. He had that Grinch grin, although his mouth was open, so you didn't get the perfect Grinch grin. But he yeah. had that Grinch like grin where he knew he had a terrible, awful idea. The light bulb went off. Yep, the light bulb went off. So DJ Z's got coming out injured, not doing his usual shit. Uh, defends in a ladder match. Title's already up on the ring. Like they, we never even saw it uh, raised. So there might have been commercial breaks where they did that. <laughs> yep, of course. So this basically was. Sadly, a one side. Although DJ Z did have several times where he got shots, but uh, he they basically DJ Z looked like he might actually get the win, but nope. th- but thankfully he got chair because this is no DQ. So Lee got a chair, hit, smacked him in the knee, grabbed the title. Well, actually, he set the ch- t- t- ladder up on uh Lee his bad leg. So, and climbed up while DJ Z was helpless, and... Well, actually, here's what he did. He put the chair over the leg, and the ladder on the other side of the chair. So, he was trapped. So, the the champ could have nothing to do, but Trevor Lee grabs the belt, 
And we can, I guess, cross out DJ Z for the Tonto Rift within the Helms Dynasty. Stay tuned in weeks to come. Yeah. So Tyrus and Eli are backstage. Tyrus says he possibly has the greatest surprise in the history, and it's next. So and unfortunately, we get one more Aaron Rex segment. Ugh. Oh fucking hell. His name should not be spoken, it should be sung. Aaron Rex! Aaron Rex! Oh, cut, fuck cut, off. cut, you're not doing it right. And he has signs doing it, too. This is like absolutely. saw the signs. So, Robbie E. interrupts, and actually, no, he says Aaron, sings Aaron Rex three freaking times before Robbie E. interferes. But Aaron interrupts, says, or, but Aaron puts his hand in front of his face and says, I'm challenging you to a ma- we got some unfinished business and he's like and, and he calls Robbie Ruby Ruby yeah Ruby and he freaking has finger things that clap I guess that's the rings but they clang together so you hear them and he's like I need to prepare physically mentally and spiritual so next week we have a date ew gross ew, yes this was horrible. Wrong choice of words, Aaron. Yeah, just end this shit. So, anyway, EC3 and Ty... I mean, Eli Drake and Ty... God damn it. I get these two confused. I don't know why, because they start Eli with... Eli Drake. Eli Drake. My apologies, Mr. Drake. You yeah, are yeah, awesome. Yeah. But Tyrus is on the mic because Eli Drake refuses to talk because these people can't act right. He announces that he... You know, Eli, you, uh, you had an idea, but... I think I got a better idea than the idea you had. And Eli's like, what? So it's EC3, because I saw EC3 in the back. He needs a walker. He's walking fine, but his ribs are a little bit banged up. Oh, he's not walking fine. He's walking slowly. He's in trouble, 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 trouble. trouble. It's something something slow, so he go he. Gets a, shows a nasty bruise, which he really... He said, for some reason. Yeah, the girls are like, ah, give the oh, girls wait, a treat the pop the shirt off. Awkward pop. Yeah, so, yeah, it, nasty bruise. He's like, that could have been infected or something. And I'm like, you know, you should bit, just bandage it. You didn't need to, act, unless that's real. So Eli works him over, and they immediately go to a commercial break. And they come back, EC, Eli is beating EC3 on the outside of the ring. He goes under the ring and grabs a baseball bat as Tyrus distracts the referee because, you know, Eli Drake didn't make this an ODQ match. Because he's an idiot. He's a dummy, he's an idiot. yeah. Dummy, yeah. <laughs> so EC3 avoids the bat, but uh, Eli takes control again, keeps working on the midsection. EC3 keeps fighting back, but to no avail. Eli keeps getting cocky and cocky and ultimately gets pinned by a jackknife roll. And then he gets beat down. Eli just got made to look like an idiot. Uh Uh-huh. I guess that's what tonight is. Idiots with briefcases. (laughs) Open fight night. Open fight night. Idiots with briefcases. Because only one of these motherfuckers... Only one of these guys was actually smart. And that was Trevor Lee. The guy who looks like a freaking caveman. So easy. This this idea is so easy. A caveman can figure it out. And yet you three, other three, couldn't. <laughs> Jeff, law, you lost because you decided too many risks. DCC wastes stairs. Wasted. And, and Eli, Eli Drake, Drake loses to a crippled man. <laughs> yes. And then Idiots with DCC cases. comes back out. And uh, if you have Steve, uh, and Kev, if you have Steve, we should call this episode It Is With Briefcases, because seriously, that's what it was. So anyway, Eli Drake beats up EC3 with the bat, does an inverted stunner, continues beating him up with the bat, the lights go out, and DCC is in the ring. And they start beating up on EC3. They beat up everybody, pretty much. Yeah, they then beat up Eli, Drake, and Tyrus. But then they do their big spot, which is a spike pile drive onto EC3. And that's this. It. I originally gave the show a D, but this guy kept bugging me about 
this, and I ultimately had to give it an F because he was showing more problems in this whole shit. They just, they didn't, they executed, they used to execute this better when Hogan was running this. I, oh, was, God. Yeah, and he's like, he basically, one of the initial reactions was, well, they, they explained that because of the, because Br- Drew already had a title shot it because, you know, Brent Drew already, I guess, accepted his, he, he tried something really stupid and I was like, no, he, this whole thing was not planned out. This was open fight night. They did not schedule this well. And he then Sai said, you could only challenge for the, uh, world title or, t- t- world title or tag title or one title you could only challenge for. I'm like, by the way, I'm like, we can only challenge for one title. I'm like, no, you can't. You can challenge for more than one. There's no rule in this. And then he, and then he goes, oh yeah, yeah, Bram as an X Division champion. No, it sounds Why stupid, not? but yes, it's kayfabe reason. It makes sense. But goddamn, you know the commercial Maybe break. Storm is X Division champion. I can yeah. do that. It's fucking hell, it makes. Maybe not Bram, but I can see Storm doing that. So, yeah, this guy makes it an F because he kept trying to fight and put digging a deeper hole in this shit. Deeper hole. Yeah, show, if they do this concept again, they gotta execute it better. Yeah, they absolutely got it. But by the way, we got to talk about the commercial that happened in after uh, e- Eli Drake started beating up on EC3. The the Life Alert commercial that they aired. You didn't oh, see this, no. did you? I did not. Or okay, the there's these two young ladies walk into the house. They are work after getting groceries. The doors lock, and they keep mentioning that their grandma their or grandma's home, like one of them, I guess one of them's a teen and one of them's her mother. He's like, grandma's home, so why is the door locked? Why can't we get in? So they're, they're worried. They keep calling her. Nothing happens. So they unlock the door, and there's a grandma falling over dead. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yes, dead grandma has fallen. She could not get up, and no life alert, so she died. Ugh, that's and terrible. That, <laughs> they did life alert for all these other situations where people got had life alert and got the help they needed. But yes, it opened up with if you do not have basically if you don't have life alert, you will die. You will fall well, down. One way to break your somebody out of product, and you will die. <laughs> I was it's like, like you will die. Oh my god! I watch this. Good god, that's terrible. And by the way. These are all actors, by the way, doing the whole dead grandma thing. So it's not like they really showed a dead grandma. <laughs> I must thank God. I must participate that that they really didn't show any. They showed a old lady on the ground, not moving at all, with her eyes closed, and they're like, "Grandma!" And you're basically no. assuming that grandma's dead. <laughs> but yes. No one was harmed during the shooting of this commercial. No, but I was just like, I was like, what? <laughs> what? That's messed up. This, this reminds me of that infamous commercial about poo. That is the poo commercial. So oh, your no. poo doesn't smell bad. <laughs> that <laughs> celebrity commercial that they had. Not celebrity. It was like an act like a celebrity. It's like, let's clean your, your poo so your poo don't stink. Yeah, it smells like roses, just like so that outcast song. Do the toilet dump donuts or something. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, or Dino Mite. The di- Dino Vite. <laughs> the dog food. Oh, God. The dog See, food that makes your dog fit healthier. For whatever Oh, reason. strings of her horrible commercials. <laughs> yes. Sometimes you you got to enjoy the commercials. Sometimes you'll find that commercial that you're just like, what the fuck were they thinking? Yeah. And on that note, uh, do I you have anything to sell? to sell? Do you have anything to sell this week? I actually do not. Okay, so we can wrap this, I guess. 